apologies for being a bit small, but blame my jeans, not me. Um, so I'm Anna Fullerton. I'm doing Belfast Buzzing with Bug Life, which is a fantastic project, which is beelines, which is connecting habitats from the wilder countryside to our urban areas to give the pollinators somewhere to feed and also hopefully somewhere to live because it is quite far. If they have nowhere, it's like a desert to them. So it's very important um, to be encouraging wildflowers. And this involves changing perceptions from people and also getting your hands dirty and actually planting some flowers or leaving it to natural regeneration. Because sometimes your biggest obstacle can be whenever someone looks at this nicely mowed lawn and thinks it's beautiful and you come along and you just leave it and it grows wild and there's flowers everywhere and seeds and people think, oh no, this is terrible. Um, it's very important to go, oh, actually this is a good thing and come and see what's actually being encouraged into your area because of this. So a bit of context, um, my project's focusing on Belfast, in, uh, just Belfast. Um, which is um, important because this is where we've lost most of our uh, wildflowers due to the uh, concrete jungle. So 97% of Northern Ireland's wildflower meadows is gone in the last half century, and that's very serious. So it's the first project in Northern Ireland, which is quite exciting to be a part of that, but also means that I have to build up my own um, volunteer network and uh, get connections with other charities to help uh, boost this project. Um, also encouraging a contribution all over Belfast is important, uh, getting everyone involved because so there are people who are more likely to experience wildlife than others. And it's not just the people who are keen, but also important to get to um, plant a keenness in people's minds of uh, why pollinators are so crucial. Uh, so the aim of this project, the main aim is to change 15 hectares of either areas that are not being um, contained for wildflowers, either they've lost them, maybe it's just grass, or maybe all it needs is a cutting regime change um, as not being cut all the time over summer, but just a couple of times and cut and lifted to remove nutrients um, out of the ground so that wildflowers, which can outcompete the grass, can it's more beneficial to them as they require less nutrients. Um, so I have a range of different sites that I'm looking at uh, for my uh, project. This can be nature reserves uh, with the National Trust. Um, not quite, um, and, and mostly council owned sites. So these are the sites that I have uh, been working with, mostly the Belfast Council and the National Trust to choose. So as you can see, there's mostly in South Belfast, but I have tried to spread it around Belfast um, and the ones, the areas that are most promising at the minute is Ormo Park and Orange Field, where I've got my plans chosen. I've got a few areas that used to be wildflower sites and then have just been left and the grass is growing. So hopefully I'll get in um, and hopefully bring some yellow rattle and some eco seed seed, which is Great, because they are native and um, try and reduce the grass and encourage diversity of plants. Um, also, Clement Wilson Park is very important. That's got a separate funding as well. So I'm focusing on that area as well um, to bring a bit of color back into Belfast. So I am supported by all these lovely charities here. Um, which are dotted around the room as well. Very helpful and um, couldn't do it without you. Um, I've had a few ups and downs with uh, working with the council, but back on track now, I hope, and hopefully get these sites sorted um, before the end of the growing season, get some wildflowers regenerated. So hopefully this project will benefit some of our pollinators. That's the plan, and uh, that's why I'm doing it. Um, we have about 101 bee species in Ireland, uh, with 
77 of them being solitary. So they, range, they live in a range of habitats uh, from meadows to parks and water bodies, um, like, the, uh, like the River Lagan and the higher terrain like Belfast Hills. So hopefully the initiative will support some of our four threatened species and encourage greater numbers of the uh, more common ones as well. Um, so some of the things I've been getting up to is juicing a Belfast buzzing pack um, on the right, uh, something that looks colorful, something that I can produce as leaflets and give out to people so that they can have the information that I've been telling them about what, what they can do in their gardens or what they, um, yeah, like uh, leaving areas to grow wild or um, making bug um, bee hotels and bug hotels, uh, just little things that they can bring home and look more into and think, oh, how can I actually make a contribution? Um, I'm to make six community engagement events and workshops. So teaching people myself and getting people involved, making uh, bee hotels. I've got um, an idea with a cup. Uh, where you can put bamboo sticks in it and hang it up in a nice little tree. And then you've got your wee quick made uh, bee hotel. We'll see how that works. Um, school sessions, education, get them while they're young, um, get them interested and excited about what uh, wildlife is out there. Um, so the talk, the training on how to teach was very helpful, thank you. Uh, two training sessions I need, uh, project talks, uh, family friend, uh, friendly nature walks, um, just getting people out into the uh, countries, um, in their nature zones and parks, because it also helps increase their well-being of their minds. And this is as important. Um, whenever people feel better, they'll want to look after what they've got. Uh, so ID workshops as well. I've got a bumblebee identification workshop coming up, which I'm really excited about. Uh, get to delve into bumblebees um, and take some beekeepers out who are keen to help the National Trust with ID. So very excited about that. And some wildlife recording days. So what I've done already, um, I joined the Climate Crack Festival. We had some crack. Uh, also chatted to... Um, there were many people just out for a stroll, walking their dog. It was a great opportunity. They walk over going, oh, what's that box filled with weird insect-like things? And I could teach them about how cool the um, ruby-tailed wasp was and um, just really build up the enthusiasm. If you're enthusiastic to them, they will feed off that and hopefully want to do more um, and that that helps. So um, I did some yellow rattle seed growth in uh, some national trust sites. Uh, that was good fun um, getting it out there. The yellow rattle is great because it um, parasitizes the uh, grass roots. So hopefully reduces uh, their growth um, to allow empty spaces which allows other seeds then to grow up of uh, wildflowers. Um, I also did a talk with Un uh, the Ulster University um, in their um, environmental courses. Uh, this was in the Cultura um, Museum and uh, that was a fantastic day and it was opportunities to get people asking questions and seeing oh, what jobs actually are out there for people who are studying envir environmental now. Because not everyone thinks of insects whenever they think of the environment. And it's important to change that mindset that these are really cool guys. Um, yeah. Uh, so I did a talk on Zoom. This was social forums and gardens. That was uh, Bug Life, the Northern Ireland Amphibian and Reptile Group and Social Farms and Gardens. That was a great um, opportunity. Uh, Josh and I did that and Ryan Montgomery. And we were able to have a, it was a small group and you think, okay, that's not great. I'm not getting that 
uh, much of an impact out there, but it was excellent that we could have one-to-one -one discussions with people who actually own their own allotments and gardens. And so they were able to go away with actual physical ideas of what they can do to improve their gardens for wildlife. And getting people confident to do that themselves is nearly more beneficial than just chatting to just a wild, um, wide amount of people who maybe are listening or not listening. Um, so I've thought of doing a pledge scheme. Uh, this is where people can feel proud of the effort they've made to their gardens. They can sign uh, to think how many uh, items, um, like I have a tick box of things, suggestions that people can do in their gardens, such as having ponds or bee hotels, leaving um, sticks around, uh, having trees, um, having uh, wildflowers, long grass, short grass, uh, compost heaps. So this is just something that can get people excited. But also, I'm encouraging people to mark what they've done on our website has a beelines map. And I want to encourage people to, to um, actively interact with this so that you, they can encourage other people as well, because they can be like, oh, I'm not the only person. There's loads of people getting involved in doing this. So it can feed that way. Also, it allows us good feedback to see what people are actually doing and whether it's working or not. I uh, did a gallery discussion uh, talking to a really enthusiastic, enthusiastic uh, beekeeper artist called Raymond, who was showing off his Apis mellifolera uh, artwork, but also the great opportunity was he wanted an ecologist to come in and also talk about the, the other bees um, that are around. Well, maybe I encourage the other bees being discussed, but anyway, uh, about what people can do to help them in their gardens, uh, but also that they exist. Because a lot of people, whenever they hear bees, they just think of the one single bee that you know is everywhere and doesn't need as much protection as the, the wee tiny bee that people maybe think is a fly and uh, don't give it a second look. But they're the ones that are suffering because they're losing their habitats and they're very picky with their south facing uh, banks that they need. Uh, so these are the ones that we need to encourage people to actually think about and think, what can we do to help? Um, so uh, along these lines, I also went to the beekeepers conference. I felt a little um, outnumbered with all the other beekeeper association and look after the honeybee. Um, and I was there with my little insect specimens box going, look at the pollen, uh, look at the hoverflies and the um, ruby tailed wasps and uh, trying to encourage enthusiasm there. Uh, because beekeepers are great because they want more flowers as well for their honeybees. So we, if we can encourage them to put uh, we uh, bee hotels out as well or leave areas for other bees, um, we can nearly work together as they're keen as well, but maybe don't have the knowledge set of what they can do. So future plans. I've got schools coming up, um, Strandham Primary School I'm working with to get some um, school sessions where I can teach children um, about maybe a little bit of identification about how they can get out and have some fun catching in nets and uh, getting dirty. Um, and some community groups as well I've got interest from um, and that uh, beekeepers, uh, bumblebee chats, and really I'm eager for volunteers then for my going out and planting wild seeds. I can't do it all myself. I could try, but it might take a while. Um, so really need, really encourage people to spread the word and, you know, there's my email address. Um, I, I would love to see as many people spread the word to, to turn up as possible. And I also have a wee evaluation there, just to let me know how I do, because I have to report everything. But thank you so much for listening, and I'll take any questions.
Uh, so I just about heard that. Is that what data have I got so far? Or what you found out that um, the results of everything that you've done with the opportunity to keep school groups is high or no? Okay, yes. Um, well, I started in July. So unfortunately, I don't have what I've done yet. I'm more setting up and starting to do uh, groups and activities, but um, I can answer that question in one year and a half time if you want, and I'll let you know how it goes. 